Okay, we talked a little bit about the drill in a previous video, and now we're gonna talk about the drill bits. So I've got a motor, and this can turn a drill bit, and I can drill holes, but what kind of bits can I use with this? Well, we have a variety of different bits, and I'll show you some of those. So the most common one that you've probably seen many, many times is just called an ordinary twist drill bit, okay? And the twist, the name twist comes from the flutes that spiral around. Now these flutes have a purpose, and that is as the drill is drilling in to a particular piece of wood and it's making little chips at the bottom, these flutes allow to carry the chips out of the hole, okay? It's like riding up a spiral elevator out of the hole. Okay, so the ordinary twist drill bit, okay? It has a, if you look carefully, it has a tapered point there, okay? So that point has a pointed, pointed point. Pointed point, a pointed point drill bit. This is going to be used for just drilling an ordinary hole, as you saw I did before. This is just gonna match whatever diameter uh, the drill bit will drill. Now you can drill holes into uh, shallow material, or you can drill holes into much deeper material, just depending on the length of the drill bit. Okay. Normally these will come in a set. This is called an index. So if you see a case with drill bits in it, it's called an index. So this is an index, drill index. Now, you'll notice there's some missing in here. It drives me crazy. Please, if you break a drill bit or if you lose a drill bit, let me know so that we can get replacements, okay? This should be a readily available set. And when there's some missing, that's uh, not good for the next person, okay? You will see another twist drill bit that has a little bit different point on it. So if I zoom in on this one, you can see that this one is not a uh, tapered angled point on the top. It has a sort of a little step on it. You can see that. This is only for wood, okay? This common drill bit that I showed you in the beginning, this could be used for wood or metal or plastic, okay? Very common, multi-purpose bit. This one for wood only. It has a little, it's called a brad point. That brad point is uh, to help you get started in a piece of wood. Okay, so when you see this drill index with these uh, brad points, please, wood only. Normally, these sets go from anywhere from like a sixteenth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch diameter up to a half an inch diameter. That's very, very common. Suppose you wanted to drill a hole that was much, much bigger than that. Uh, you got a couple of options. So here is a spade bit, okay? This is actually one inch. We'll drill one inch diameter. But what you'll notice is it's not round. It's very, very flat, okay? It has two cutting surfaces here and here, and then it has a centering point here. So if I put this uh, drill bit into my chuck, and again, tighten it up until it stops clicking, okay? Now this one, you'll notice as it's turning, it's, uh, it's that flat surface turning round and round. Uh, this is what that hole would look like, okay? So if I wanted to drill this hole, place it down, drill it. But you can see what I want you to notice is that uh, the drill, it has a flat bottom in it. Okay, and it also is gonna show that little drill point. So whatever you drill into, that centering point right there is gonna leave a mark. Now, you can drill all the way through. If I wanted to drill all the way through and make a hole all the way through something, I could certainly go all the way through, but I can also drill a uh, shallow hole that does not go all the way through, like this one, for example. I just wanted a little depression in there, but not go all the way through, okay? The next type of drill bit is called a Forstner bit. It's a set of Forstner bits. What makes the Forstner bit unique is, this is only for wood, let me back up. The spade bit, wood only, wood only. The Forstner bit, wood only. Now you can see there's a lot more complex geometry going on here, right? Okay, so this does the same job as the spade bit, all right? Uh, it drill, drills a bigger diameter hole, but with all this extra geometry, these extra cutting teeth, uh, you have a shallower little guiding point there. This will make a cleaner hole, 
in wood. Again, you can drill all the way through if you want to. This really is designed for drilling a hole that does not go all the way through your material, all the way through the wood. I chuck this one up. So here's an example of this hole created with this Forstner bit. You can see that it is a shallow hole. You still get that tiny little dimple in there, that little drill point. It's not as big as the spade bit, okay? So I can drill shallow holes that don't go all the way through. And again, you can see the variety of different diameter. This set does go up to a two inch diameter Forstner bit. So I can drill a two inch diameter shallow hole in wood. Forstner bits, wood only. Next up is the step bit, okay? And this is like having a whole set of drill bits in one. So instead of carrying around this entire set, I might get a step bit like this. Now, the limitation is I can only drill a hole uh, at the, in, in very thin, thin materials. So the distance from one step to the next, from one step to the next, is as, as deep as I can drill, right? It's not made for drilling in and making a cone-shaped hole. This is meant for drilling uh, into very thin material like this thin piece of sheet metal, right? This is primarily for metal. You could use it in wood, but generally this is just going to be used for metal. The depth that I drill into the material is going to determine uh, the diameter. So the depth, how deep I go in, determines how uh, the diameter of the drill bit. And you can see it gives a little um, rating on there, sizes of the particular hole size labeled on there. Okay, so this is very common with electricians. So here's an electrical box. And I realize that most of these are punch outs, right, where you would punch a hole uh, just by a knockout, but it's already pre-cut. Pre you just push those out with a tool. But if you had to drill an extra hole in here for some reason uh, in this box, you could see that this would be perfect for um, this size of material. This thickness of material is perfect size for this. And you could see if I go in that deep, that's going to be that size hole. Uh, this is actually much bigger than I actually have, but this one might be just right. So if I wanted to drill the size of that hole, I would continue drilling, 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 drilling until I got to the very end. The step drill also comes in various sizes, so there's some different sizes of step drills in a convenient package. All right, next up, I'm going to zoom down here. We're going to look at the hole saw kit. So this is a hole saw set right there, hole saw kit. So what's inside a hole saw kit? Well. The reason it's called a hole saw is used for drilling holes, but if you look closely, it looks like little saw blade teeth, and it's wrapped around a cylinder so that it's actually sawing as opposed to drilling. You won't get a round hole, but think of it as sawing a hole in a circle, right? And all of these different diameters are for different sized holes. So... What does that hole look like? Well, here I have an example here of this one. So this is actually, I believe, a it's marked on there, four and three quarters. So if I were to use this hole saw, I could create a hole in a piece of plywood or, or metal. Uh, this, these can be used for wood or metal. Uh, I would actually get a hole that size. Now, the neat thing about the hole saw is it doesn't cut all this material out and just make a pile of chips it actually leaves a slug or a piece removed. So this would be the piece that comes out of the middle now, much for a much smaller hole saw. But if I were to try to figure out what size this was, so you can see, if I were to use this size hole saw and I were to drill through a piece of plywood, and then this would be the piece that was removed at the end. So I'd have a hole and then I have this slug or this blank that comes out as well. Now. You need to use, in addition to the hole saw, you need to use an arbor. The arbor 
in addition to the hole saw, you need to use an arbor. Okay, the arbor is what connects the hole saw to the drill. Okay, so I have to have some way to connect it to the drill. And I also have something to keep it centered. So in this case, I can show you, this is a typical arbor for this hole saw. And there's a threaded portion here. And I thread that in part way. And then this particular one locks in with a little key lock. So it locks, locks in. And then I tighten, tighten this little jam nut on top. And that locks it into place. Okay, so now I have a way to attach my hole saw to the drill. And I have this centering bit that keeps it from walking away. If I didn't have that little pilot bit, that centering bit, then the saw would want to wander all over the place. It wouldn't want to stay in one, in one point. So if I open that up and I lock that in, you can tighten it until it clicks. Now you can see I have a saw that rotates around and drills a hole. So I would simply drill that the way I did in the past. One caution with hole saws, you want to drill very, very slowly, okay? You are trying to remove a lot of material, and so you do not want to drill fast with a hole saw. Very, very, very slow, uh, especially in metal. Okay, so again, the hole saw, once, uh, once you drill through, you will be left with this portion here. It'll usually be stuck in there like that once you've drilled all the way through. And again, this is just an example, but I've drilled all the way through, and then I have my piece with a hole in it. So I'm left with this blank or this slug that's left in there, and it's kind of trapped between the pilot drill and this uh, outer shell, the hole saw itself. You see the slots on the side here? I'm simply just going to take a flat tip screwdriver and I'm just going to try to gently pry that out using one side and then the other, working its way out back and forth a little bit until I can get a little bit of a grip on it. And do this when you're removing this, make sure it's out of the drill. I don't want to actually have it in the drill when I'm trying to remove it because I could, um, I could accidentally start the drill and then I have a whole mess in my hand. The other thing you can do is if it's really good and stuck, you can take the arbor back out and make it much easier. So right now it's trapped between those two. So if I loosen this arbor and I take that back out and I unscrew the arbor, now you can see it's really just stuck on that, stuck on that centering drill, right? So I get that back out and then the uh, slug will come out pretty easily. There are a couple different sizes of arbors, so just make sure that you match the arbor. For the very small hole saws, you'll see you just want to use this smaller threaded arbor, like this. Okay, it doesn't have a locking nut on it, it just threads in like that. Okay, if you have one of these bigger hole saws, you'll notice it not only does it have that inside thread, but it has these pattern of holes around the outside that match this locking. Just makes it a little bit easier to get it in and out that way. You're going to thread that in, and then again, I said match those up and lock it down. So just be sure that you get the right type of arbor for the hole saw. Go very, very slowly with the hole saw. Can be used in metal, uh, thin pieces of metal. You won't drill very thick. It's just not uh, substantial enough to drill very thick metal, but you can drill thin metal holes and holes in wood and plastic. Okay, quick review. Ordinary twist drill, very, very general purpose, very versatile. Uh, depending on the length, you can get various lengths to drill in the different depths of the material, but this can be used for metal, wood, plastic, almost any material. You can use an ordinary twist drill bit. Okay, the twist drill bits, usually uh, very popular sizes from a sixteenth of an inch by uh, fractions of an inch up to a half an inch. Very, very common. For drilling in wood in a larger than a half an inch, you might want to go to the spade type bit. These are economical and quick and easy to use. Uh, also another option for drilling in bigger diameter wood is the Forstner bit. Forstner bit is gonna give you a finer finish than the spade bit, a little bit more precision. Okay, if you're drilling in thin sheet metal, you want the all-purpose unibit or step drill bit. 
Unibit is a brand name. Step Drill is sort of the uh, generic name for that. But it's like having uh, several different sizes in one. And you simply just drill until you get the proper size. The depth, more the depth you go, the bigger diameter. Okay, and lastly was the whole saw set. Uh, lots and lots of different sizes in there for bigger diameters. You will need to go really, really slow with the hole saws and just be certain that you get the proper size arbor and be careful when removing the slug. Uh, 